Welcome everyone to Use It, Don't Lose It, Tech Donations Before Calendar Year End. Thanks for joining us for today's TechSoup webinar. Before we begin, I'd like to make sure everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk. You can go ahead and chat to, to ask us any questions or let us know if you need help by using the box on the lower left side of your screen. You should be hearing the audio play through your computer speakers. If you are hearing more than one audio stream, it may mean that you are logged in more than once and we will need to close any instances of ReadyTalk. We will keep all other lines muted today so that you can hear me nice and loud and clear with my uh, voice that is slightly dim diminished due to a cold. So I apologize for that up front. If at any time the um, slides and audio fall out of sync, we recommend dialing into the toll-free number that Susan just chatted out. And if you lose your Internet connection, we recommend clicking that green Join Meeting button from the confirmation or reminder emails. If you registered uh, this morning, you should have gotten an email that included the attached uh, presentation. And it's a slide deck that you're welcome to use as a reference, but it won't actually look like what we're going to do today. It's on the right side of that email under Downloadable Files, a link that you click, and you can open up the slides. However, we are going to treat today's webinar um, as a tour guided by you, our audience. You're going to be able to vote and tell us what you most want to cover today as far as what technologies you're most in need of between now and the end of this year so we can help guide you to the different types of donations that will best serve your needs now. We are recording today's webinar, and we will make it available to you afterwards by email. We'll send it to you within the next few days. And you will be able to find it on our YouTube channel at TechSoup Video. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I will be your host for today. And if you've just joined, again, I apologize for uh, my voice being a little bit uh, diminished. I'm in the middle of a cold, so I apologize. Uh, it seems to be the, the gift that keeps on giving this season. Nearly everyone in my household is, has been struck by it, so I appreciate your, your understanding if I have to pause to uh, cough a little here and there. Uh, but I'm glad that you were able to join us. You will also hear from Susan Hope Bard, our Training and Education Manager here at TechSoup. She's on the back end chatting out to you already, but she'll also be helping field your questions and direct them to me once we start the live tour portion of today's webinar. The objectives for today. We hope that you will come away from this having a better idea of the donation programs and technologies that you can access before the end of the calendar year, which is just 11 days away. We hope that you'll come away knowing at least three of our newer technology donation programs that you maybe hadn't heard of before that might be available to your organization. And we hope that you'll feel more confident and comfortable in accessing those donations through our website. Mostly, I want to make sure that you leave our webinar today having your questions answered. So like I said in the front end here that I really want to make this about what will most serve your needs in the, these last 11 days of the year. I'd like to welcome you to do that by taking a moment and voting on screen or commenting in the chat and clicking on which of these are the areas of greatest need for your organization's technology right now. Are you most in need of computer hardware? Are you most in need of updating your bookkeeping, finance, accounting software? Are you needing donor management or CRM tools? fundraising tools or uh, donor tools? Are you looking for security and backup? Maybe there's something not on this list that I should have included like networking or operating systems. There's a lot of things I didn't include just for the sake of brevity. So feel free to chat in if there's a specific technology area that you need assistance with. Maybe you really are looking for access to cloud tools. Somebody just mentioned in the chat Azure, Microsoft's, uh, one of Microsoft's cloud programs, so I can mention that. But let us know in the chat or by way of this poll, and I'll do my best to center our time around those topics that most people have voted for. So uh, I'm going to give just a few more seconds so people can weigh in. Um, and Jo Lynn asks, if there's a topic we don't cover, how can we get more information? I'll do my best to do a, a roundup of all of these topics, 
so I won't be able to cover them all in great detail. If there are things that aren't on this list, like somebody just mentioned inventory tools, someone else mentioned in the back end project management tools, um, I'm not likely to be able to cover those. And honestly, we don't have a lot in our catalog for inventory tools. Uh, project management, we do have a couple of options in our catalog, primarily Microsoft Project. Um, but there's not a lot on our site that honestly covers a lot of those. So I wouldn't spend too much time on them even if we did have time today. Um, the best option is to follow up with me by email after, and you can do that at becky at techsoup.org for anything that we don't have time to cover today. And I will do my best to point you to resources across our site. So I'm going to go ahead and show the results so that I can see what people mostly voted for. But I'm also looking in the chat to see uh, other people asking about virtual marketing, electronic signature plans and processes, um, nonprofit pricing for Microsoft Dynamics, GP, uh, lots of specific things in the back end. But computer hardware by far comes up as the number one area, followed by training and education. And I would love it if you folks who voted for training and education could chat in. Are you looking for tools uh, by which you can train people in your staff or on your organization on technology? Or are you looking for training and education tools to use to educate um, your users, your constituents? Uh, if you can tell me what area of training and education in the chat, that would be helpful. Some people are saying both. That's very helpful for me to get an understanding. And then I see fundraising tools followed by web design and graphic design, web or graphic design. Okay, sorry, I'm just taking some notes here while, while you vote and weigh in. Uh, some folks are saying training and education tools to educate our patrons, computer basics job searching, that's from Patty. Uh, let's see, training for employees as in professional development as well as client. Training tools to teach fundraisers across the country for a national walk on how to use social media. Great. So we've got a lot of different areas to cover and about 52 minutes to do it. So I will do my best to take us through. And so <clears throat> as I mentioned, if folks didn't join at the very beginning, you have access to a slide deck that was sent out with the final reminder. And that is available on the right side of that email under downloadable links called Presentation. Uh, that slide, slide deck will not look anything like what we actually are covering today because I wanted to make this very interactive based on how those of you who joined us live voted on this poll. So I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop. Susan will be watching the chat in the back end. And I'm going to take us to the TechSoup site. And since computer hardware was the section that got the most votes, I want to just talk really quickly about the way TechSoup works and how we bring hardware and computer technologies to you from a variety of different sources, and why now in this last 11 days of the calendar year is a good time to use up that budget if you still have budget for this year. Um, I know some of you may not have a fiscal year that coincides with the calendar year. But for those of you that do, if you have received grant funds or donations and your budget ends as of this calendar year, now is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, now is a great time to really capitalize on using that up. As somebody who worked in small nonprofits in particular in the past, uh, I know that we had budget frequently from grants or from um, we sometimes had you know, government related grants, foundation grants, private grants. And if we didn't spend it down, they would say, well, you don't need as much for next year. And so if we had an extra $1,500 in there, they'd say, well, we'll give you $1,500 less since you didn't utilize all of that, rather than letting us roll it over and then adding to that the following year. And so as much as it's often the case where it's feast or famine in many nonprofits, and I imagine public libraries and churches often feel this way too, where you have not enough money sometimes, and other times you have more money. Well, this is the time of year that we know most nonprofits are also getting the most funds in from donors. This is this last quarter of the year is when most organizations are uh, collecting donations. 
And so TechSoup brings hardware to you in a variety of different ways. Uh, we have under this Get Products and Services section, we have a link to what's called the Hardware Favorites. And this will take you to a section that looks at both our refurbished computer initiative program, which is largely refurbished computers, meaning factory grade, uh, business grade, refurbished, meaning brought back up to uh, re resaleable quality. So they are, have been reconditioned and repackaged to look nice and shiny and new. Um, laptops, PCs, monitors, keyboards, the whole shebang. You can buy them individually. You can buy monitors. You can request um, tablets. You can request laptops. So you can see these different programs up top, but then there's also this Dell Affiliate Program. So this is another mechanism by which we are bringing hardware to the nonprofit sector. If you need brand new machines, we have a Dell Affiliate Program where paying a small fee to TechSoup, and that's just for our administrative costs and helping deliver these kinds of services and programs as a nonprofit to other nonprofits and public libraries. You pay the small administrative fee which I believe is just $10. And it gets you access to this Dell program that provides you access to discounted laptops, to two-in-ones, desktops, all-in-ones, two-in-one PCs, other electronics and accessories. Uh, the discount rates vary depending on what you are looking at. So for example, if you are needing a, a digital SLR camera, the discount on that might be 10%. Whereas a discount on uh, Inspire and Desktop Towers might be 45%. So it is a great opportunity to get new Dell hardware through that Dell Affiliate Program. And so what I just skipped over to is a Dell page. Uh, I can't dive into this too deeply because basically uh, that small administrative fee you pay to TechSoup gets you access to this site. So I can't show the full detail, but um, because these offers change all the time, so I wouldn't want to show you something that isn't actually the promised price when you go to look at it uh, because they are offering specials and deals right now, especially this time of year. Dell has tons of deals going on even for these affiliated programs. So now is the time to check these out if you are really looking for hardware. Um, but this is one of the options that is available through uh, that hardware favorite, favorite section. So if I click on this Join the Dell Affiliate Program, you will see that it shows 15% you know, off Optiplex, 6% off this. You know. But I can click on this link to see the description, and it is a $10 admin fee that then gets you access to all of those types of discounts. And so it will show you um, – right here it shows you some of these, but I know that they've got a lot of special deals going on now through the end of the year. So I would check those out. Most include shipping as well. And I will say that through, um, through the Refurbished Computer Initiative, which is this tab here, but you can also scroll down and see some of the examples of the refurbished computers. These are the most popular desktops, most popular laptops. These, these are the ones that have been requested most often lately. If I want to check out this Lenovo ThinkPad, which is a higher end business grade laptop that has been factory refurbished by our refurbishing partner PCRR. And usually what this means is a company like General Motors for example, or Boeing, which has 20,000 laptops that they may be moving in and out of circulation every year that have only been used for two years in uh, their offices. They are rotating these out. They have another five years life left on these. And they refurbish them, bring them back up to new quality, and sell these. And these are higher end, factory, uh, shined up, and then available for this admin fee. So it is not a donation because it is not fully gifted to anybody. Uh, that is why there is a cost still that is fairly substantial. But this is much less than the you know, $1,100 you would pay for the equivalent Lenovo ThinkPad T420 um, through the retail sector. And so it tells you what comes on it. If it comes with um, – so this has Microsoft Office 2010. It tells you what kind of operating system. You can read all about the specs. Uh, these details are available 
on each of these pages. This is just one example that I happen to click into. And these also include shipping. There's no additional cost to ship these to you. So that's a, a nice benefit too for those of you who aren't you know, Amazon Prime members and get your free shipping with everything. Um, you don't have to worry about paying additional shipping costs. So those are a couple of examples. If I go back to that hardware page, you'll see um, we have uh, other kinds of programs here too, like Mobile Beacon. You'll see it listed up here on the top screen in this little slider. Let me scroll up a little bit more so you can see it. These are mobile broadband hotspots. And if you're not familiar with a, what a hotspot is, it's a little thing that you can use next to your laptop no matter where you are, whether you're in your car traveling down the highway, hopefully as a passenger, um, using your laptop, or on a train, or in a cabin in the woods that if you get a mobile signal, you'll be able to get Internet for your computer. And so this is one of those little, little boxes. Uh, sometimes they are a little USB thingy that you plug into your computer. Other times it's just a little box. In this case it's just this little box. And this can provide Internet for I believe up to five or six devices at one time um, within a certain range of that little box. These are donated by a company called Mobile Beacon. And one thing that's great if you happen to uh, be joining us today from a public library or maybe a community center or a Boys and Girls Club or YMCA where you may have um, people who could use these that you would check them out to people in your community. Or maybe you have people on staff that work remotely or board members that travel or maybe you're joining us from a church and you have, or a synagogue and you have a, a deacon or a rabbi who's traveling a lot, that you can have multiples of these. This gives you up to 5 mobile hotspots or up to 10 mobile hotspots for this flat rate of 108. And then it's a $10 a month subscription fee to access Internet service for that all the time. So you can get Internet no matter where you go. Uh, before signing up for it, I would recommend definitely checking out the service areas. This is using, um, I believe it's the Sprint network. So you'd want to make sure that you are looking at this coverage area. There's a big map and you can type in your, your address. If I click this open, I think it pulls it up. It's going to take a moment because of course we're on a live event. It always does that. Um, so it will show you here it is using the Sprint network. You can type your actual address in or addresses where you may frequently be and check to see that your area has good coverage before you subscribe yourself to anything. And then for $10 a month you get Internet. Pretty great, pretty low cost. Um, certainly the lowest cost Internet that I've ever been able to access as a grown adult person. So this is another area of hardware that we have available. At different times we have printers. Sometimes we have label printers. Sometimes we've had postal frankers, uh, those little machines that you can put your direct mailers through that frank your envelope and put your postage on. So it really depends on the donation program at the time because we get donor partners in and out uh, periodically at different times. Um, and so sometimes we may have cameras. Sometimes we may have cell phones. So we do have um, some mobile phones available through our partner Sparrow. Um, so you may be able to find lots of different types of computer hardware, laptops, PCs, notebooks. Um, we have tablets uh, in here as well. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. If I click to Browse Refurbished Computers on this main link here, I can scroll down and I can look at the desktops, laptops, monitors, and warranties, which all of these come, even the refurbished computers, come with warranties that range from 90 days to sometimes a year. Um, I would recommend with anything you purchase or request, whether it's donated or full out purchased, whether it's from through TechSoup Partner or whether it's from Dell or from Best Buy, that you take it out of the box, plug it in within the first 15 days no matter what it is to make sure it works. Because a lot of these places have 
limited windows of opportunity to return the products without paying a hefty restocking fee or without being able to return it at all. So if you get something, make sure that you are prepared to plug it in and make sure it turns on even if you are not hooking it up to anything else or networking it or whatever you may be doing so that you don't end up with a dud in the box. Um, all of our products through the refurbishing program have at least 90 day minimum warranties. But I would still, like I said, make sure that you are plugging them in and making sure they are working before you actually need them to be in service full time. So these are some examples, again, of the types of machines you can find. Um, this is just you know, one other section, the RCI section, Refurbished Computer Initiative Program. Um, one other program I wanted to let you know about is called Journey Ed. And so if you look by donor or provider, and you scroll to journeyed.com. I have it open on my desktop already. But this is similar <coughs> – excuse me, I'm sorry about my voice. This is similar to the Dell program where you pay a small administrative fee. In this case it's five – oh no, it's $10, I'm sorry. A $10 fee uh, to, Journey Ed, or to TechSoup to gain access to the JourneyEd platform. If you're familiar with um, – if you maybe come to us from an educational background, you may be familiar with JourneyEd because this was a, a program that was previously only available to uh, K through college type educational institutions. But this gets you access to JourneyEd's catalog. And so I'll show you. It's not the link that you would be able to see, but this is the TechSoup partnership page with JourneyEd. And so they also have computer hardware from desktops, laptops, tablets. They also have iPads. These are refurbished iPads. Um, we don't really have any Apple products very often through – or Mac products through TechSoup's program simply because we don't have a consistent donor of, of Mac products. And that's just the, the sad reality of it. I wish we had more, but we haven't, haven't been able to establish that firm relationship with Apple to bring us those products. If any of you know them, hook us up. We've been trying for a long time. Um, but JourneyEd has a program for refurbished iPads. So if you're needing Apple products, they have some. But in addition, so they have this laptops and tablets section where you can see notebooks, tablets, accessories. Um, they don't have as much in the desktop section as we do. So if you're really needing desktop towers, real you know, workhorse PCs at your desks. Uh, our program may be better for that, but this is better for laptops and tablets or just another place to compare. Um, they also have other accessories. But in addition to that, they have all kinds of other hardware like mixing boards and DJ equipment and video cameras and all of your audio-visual things that you might need. If, for example, you have uh, you know, maybe you're joining us from a church and you need audiovisual equipment for your services. Um, or you have an after school program that runs uh, talent shows and you need that kind of equipment. So other types of hardware are available through this, including lots of educational tools, um, but lots of other electronics and accessories, cameras, microphones, things like that, um, projectors are available through the JourneyEd program at pretty steep discounts. Uh, as with any kind of product, you'd want to shop around, compare your prices, look at how much the cost is, include the shipping and the taxes, you know, really get an idea of what will work best. But as with the Dell program, you can't actually view the full catalog unless you pay that $10 admin fee. So you'll see some examples if we click to view the details back on the TechSoup site. You can see some examples of you know, the iPad or an Idea tab for $49. Can't beat that. Um, Dragon Naturally, one of these great accessibility tools that helps you know, make uh, your computer technology more accessible for all audiences. Camtasia, that's one of the programs we use in-house a lot for editing videos. So these are some of the examples of the costs of these compared to retail costs. You know that you can get Camtasia Studio 8 for $178.95. If you went to TechSmith directly to purchase it, I believe it's $299. And even with their nonprofit discount, I think it's still $249. So it still saves you $60 to do it through, uh, to do it through JourneyEd. 
So these are some great options for you, and that's an annual one-time fee. So you pay $10, you get access to that for the whole year. Um, and once you've got access, you can go back in and request anything you want throughout that whole year. Uh, and it's, it's not something you need to pay each time you go to shop. So those are a couple of things on computer hardware. Before I go on to the next section, I want to go ahead and pause and ask Susan if there's any questions related to the computers and hardware category that I can answer. Thanks so much, Becky. Yes, um, we do have a question about JourneyEd and how folks can find out if they qualify for JourneyEd and specifically are all nonprofits eligible? Where would they get that information? Great question. I'm sorry I didn't mention that earlier. Anytime, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Anytime you're on any of our product pages, um, you can click on Rules, Eligibility, and Restrictions, this tab right here. And you'll be able to see that it's for nonprofits and libraries, and that you can access the discounted rates once per fiscal year, which runs July 1st to June 30th. You can get as many discounted products through them as you need during that fiscal year, and you can renew it once a year. You can see if there are any restrictions on operating size. You can see what kinds of organizations. So this says nonprofits and public libraries only. So that may, may mean uh, it doesn't say that there are specific types of nonprofits that are not eligible. I don't see anything listing that churches are not. So if you are a 501c3 registered nonprofit, you should be eligible. You would go through the process. If you are already registered with TechSoup and you log in to your TechSoup account, which I'll do really quickly on a test account just to show you. I'll pick one of my many testers. And I go up here to the Check Your Eligibility that's listed under Get Products and Services. If I click on this once I'm logged in, it, since I have a lot of test accounts, I'll just pick Awesome Youth of Ann Arbor, one of my test accounts. <laughs> um, you would obviously be logged in under your account, or if you have multiple accounts, you would log in under one of those multiple accounts. And you can go down and see, is JourneyEd listed? And let's see. Here we go, JourneyEd. These are all of the programs for which my organization is actually eligible. So if you're not sure, log in, do that eligibility check, and it will show you, look at all the stuff I can get. Uh, somebody earlier mentioned that they were looking for e-signature stuff. DocuSign. There you go. That's what you want. Uh, I won't have time to cover much in that category, but DocuSign is the, the best of the donated products around. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is a way that you can see what types of programs you're eligible for. I can also see, <clears throat> excuse me, I can gain access to the Dell Affiliate Program. I can get access to RCI notebooks, ICR, R, sorry, RCI desktops, RCI other desktops. Those of you looking at notebooks, you can click on these. Some of these are brand new, not all refurbished, even though it's listed under the Refurbished Computer Program. Sometimes they are not all refurbished. Sometimes they have brand new tablets. It's a little confusing. It can be hard to tell your way around. So just keep that in mind. We get things in and out, different types of products, different levels. So here you'll see there's a MacBook Air. Once in a while we do get Macs, just not a ton. So you can always search by terms. So if you want to just look for MacBooks, you can just search up here in this little search box, MacBook. And let's see if it actually pops up in our search. Hopefully it will. There we go. A couple of MacBooks. And you can, anytime you search, just know that there are, your product donations are going to default on this first tab. But you can also access other resources, articles and how-tos if there are related webinars or other community threads from our forums or our blog. You'll find those on these search tabs. So any other questions on computer and hardware that I should tackle before we move on? I actually have a question from Tim. Can we donate hardware to PCRR? 
That is a great question. Um, they do take donations. I don't know, uh, you know if you are coming from a background of having you know, a steady stream of thousands of computers at your disposal to donate, but they tend to take donations primarily from these giant corporations that have a two to three year cycle of getting their content out. So they, uh, they don't tend to take you know, three or four computers at a time. But we do have some resources on how to donate your technology if you are interested. So we'll pull up a couple of links and we'll chat those out. Um, but we, we do have tips on how to donate hardware if you need to. So that's a great question, and thank you for even being willing to do that. I know there's lots of organizations here locally in the Bay Area. I'm not sure where you're located, Tim, but like OTX West in Oakland does an amazing job with taking donated computers from within the community, refurbishing them, and then distributing them to low-income youth. So if you don't find a big program like PCRR or Interconnection or CDI, one of those big refurbishing partners that we work with, you may find a local partner that's willing to uh, and happy to take your donated computers to then redistribute them to the community that needs them. So I'm going to go ahead and move us along to training and education resources. So I'm going to go back to the TechSoup homepage. And you can see on our homepage, just quickly, I'm going to scroll down. We've got these you know, top spotlight boxes. <coughs> Articles and how to's, trending topics. Down a little further, right over here, we've got this really exciting new section called TechSoup Courses that um, I'm, I'm excited to highlight, even though I feel like I should have Susan highlight it because it's her baby that she has really created out of thin air. She's developed an amazing uh, curricula, a series of curricula on a learning management system platform that she has set up and built. Um, and this is a great resource that we created in, what, in August I think it first launched. And TechSoup Courses, I'm just going to show you, is our platform that we are using to provide courses to you, technology needers, as are we, <laughs> technology learners. Um, <clears throat> and you can access both totally free courses, and some paid levels of courses for upper level courses on a variety of topics. And we're adding to it all the time. So watch for a bunch to come out in January again. But for example, there's a full course on tech training for nonprofits and library staff. There's a free 101 course on tech planning. If you want any of the more advanced level courses on tech planning, there is a, a pretty small fee compared to uh, what a retail price would be for a course like this. And so you'll see there's this full course plan of four parts for this tech planning series. I'm going to go ahead and look into the tech training for nonprofit and library staff just to show you an example. I don't know if it will let me join the course since I'm already in it. Let me see if it will let me. Just going to see if it will log me in and, and show it what it looks like in real life. Oh, it's making me apply. Well, it's a pretty quick process to apply few questions to answer. And this, this helps us gauge where you are as a learner when you enter the course. But you create a new login and password, so it's not the same password and login that you would use on the TechSoup site. It certainly can be, but it's not the same credentials. It's like getting a library card. You just fill it out once, and then you can access the full library of courses as you choose. Uh, we will be adding more courses to it, like I said, in January. Um, everything from you know, how to use Photoshop better, to using QuickBooks and things like that. We'll be adding courses throughout the course of the year. So definitely check that out. And we are trying to keep it free or as low cost as we can. Um, we are not the experts on all of these topic areas, so we are making sure that uh, when we have to pay an expert to do it that we're compensating them for that. But there is a cost to that then. But we are trying to keep those costs as low as possible. But like I said, most of the I think all of the 100 level courses will be free for our community. So highlighting that TechSoup courses, definitely check it out. Um, and then you'll also see webinars and events. You obviously know about our webinars because you're here. But you'll see we have a steady stream of webinars 
each month. And you can find these listed on our home page. You can also find them listed on our webinars and events page. Before I leave this main home page, I wanted to also highlight TechSoup for Libraries. If you are joining us from a public library, this site which I have open already here, is a great resource specifically for libraries uh, to share their experiences around using technology, to see webinars that are specific to the library community, to view spotlights of what other libraries are doing. For example, this Spartanburg Public Library Spotlight talking about how they work within their community and how they incorporate technologies. Looking at these these cookbooks you may have heard um, on how to maintain and support your public library computers, which would include public computing machines in addition to your staff machines, um, resources for how to help train your staff, lots of great resources across this. And the blog always has new content that's interesting and specific to the library community. So I would check that out if you're joining us from a library. And then another area to learn and access expertise is through NetSquared, which I don't know if I – oh, I do have it open already. NetSquared is a, a series of meetups around the world in cities all over the place. And you can find one near you. And if there isn't one near you, you can always create one near you or get up with a friend or another colleague who has an interest in this and help cultivate a community of tech expertise in your area. You don't have to be the tech expert. When I lived in Washington, D.C., um, gosh, I left D.C. in 2007. And when I lived there from 2004 to 2007, I helped establish the first NetSquared in D.C. with a couple of colleagues. And I didn't know anything about technology. I just knew I needed to know about technology. So we started having happy hours and inviting people who we knew had expertise come to talk to us about their technology. So I'd say, hey, you work for this company that offers a content relationship – or sorry, constituent relationship management tool. Can you invite a couple of friends who also do that kind of work, and they can come and talk to us about what we need to look for? And that's how it ended up starting. And that's really all it is. Great events where you can access expertise and get training, get resources. Um, it's not actual training, but it's, it's a great place to access some tech expertise. I'm going to jump back to the TechSoup site and show you now some of the products related to training. If you scroll down under Get Products and Services and go by Category or Solution, all the way over here to the right you'll see a Training and Education section. So in addition to highlighting our own course curricula, we have some sections here under this drop-down where you can see tools for conducting your own trainings, like tools that you would use to conduct trainings outward, so maybe training your volunteers or your board or your staff where you might need online conferencing or training tools or your own learning management system. And this consists of tools like ReadyTalk, which is the platform we are using today, and Litmos, which is a learning management system, GoToTraining, GoToWebinar, GoToMeeting. These are all available. Now these are these admin fees pay for access for different rates of discounts. This uh, GoToWebinar previously was owned or called Citrix, but they've just recently updated their name to GetGo. So if you search Citrix on our site, I'm not sure if it will take you to this any longer. Just know that it's under GetGo for GoToTraining, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar. Um, so it gets you discounted rates. So be aware when you are looking at these and really suss out what the rates will be because all of these different programs for online conferencing services, some may have totally free streaming. Some may have a charge to add phone lines. Some may only allow up to 25 participants. So just look at those and really evaluate. We have some article content that helps evaluate some of that, but it changes so, so rapidly that it's really best to just do some research online, spend some time doing some comparisons before you select something. So that's one category. And we have some related content along the side here. If you select the second category, this is really how to get courses for yourself and your staff, how you can learn to do things better. 
And so there's some general technology courses. You'll see another drop-down opened up here. And all of these other areas, IT professional courses, nonprofit management, young learner courses, finance courses, all of these different categories of trainings exist. So Skillsoft has a whole bunch of trainings that they've made available way, way less than paying their regular retail rates. So for $20 admin fee, you get a full package of Office 2013 fundamentals. I think it's like 20 hours of courses that you can take for 20 bucks. It's crazy. Um, you know, Office 365, Windows 8, Windows 10, um, this one is even better, Windows 8 and 10 and Office 2013 fundamentals. You get the whole package for 20 bucks. It's crazy. So lots of training courses. Um, if you need support on data visualization tools like Power BI or Tableau, another data viz tool, or you just want to learn how to type better, I love Bytes of Learning. Ultra Key is one of my favorite tools. And it's super. It's like this great tool that harkens back to the good old days where you had to take typing class in college or in high school. But it works, and it's only 15 bucks. Um, a great series of webinars on accomplishing more with less, some great strategies to help you get work done more efficiently and better. Uh, so lots of types of courses available. That's just one section. Somebody mentioned finance, so I'm going to show the finance course section too. But know that these drop-downs are here and available to you. Um, this series has training specifically on QuickBooks. And there are uh, there's QuickBooks Made Easy for nonprofits. This is the 2015 version for those of you who have an older version of QuickBooks uh, that you're running. And then there's the QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. The newer one is the 2016 version. It's, I don't believe it's been updated to the 2017 version yet. So if you have switched to QuickBooks 2017, you may want to keep an eye out for that. If you're using QuickBooks Online, there's a training series just for the online version. Note that they are very different. So make sure if you are using one of these that you're selecting the right type of training. Um, so that's another section available. And then there's nonprofit management courses. You want to know how to be a better communications professional? There are certificate series for board governance. There's certificates, and this gets you the whole series of all of these. But individual items on um, you know, becoming a better marketing professional. And these come with continuing education credits if you are working toward a degree or some type of other certification all kinds of subjects here. So I would definitely check this out if you are looking for more training in professional development for yourself or people on your staff or maybe your board. Um, so that is training and education. There are tons of resources across our site in a lot of these sections. Like I mentioned all of these blog posts and webinars. I can't go into everything today in the short amount of time that we have. But I will pause. <coughs> Pause again to ask if Susan if there's any questions that have come up, or if I should just continue with fundraising tools. Okay, she said somebody had a question around Microsoft in general and what kinds of tools there are. We have tons of Microsoft across the board. This is our biggest donation program, our biggest donor partner. So I would be remiss not to mention them in this. But uh, they are everywhere and um, extremely generous across our programs. They do donate I think 500 different products across our site. Um, so if you go to, de to Browse by Category and look at Donor or Partner and just click on Microsoft, I'm just going to show quickly and then I'll move on to fundraising tools. You can see the full Microsoft donation program. And you can see the top Microsoft products here. So if you know that you want to update uh, and get the newer Microsoft Office, you know you maybe need newer operating systems, or you need Windows Server or SQL Server, these are available links right off the side. Easy peasy. Um, the donation programs with micro, that come with Microsoft donations, sorry, <laughs> the benefit that comes with Microsoft donations um, called Software Assurance is amazing. And it is a super huge 
deal that people don't realize that when you request a Microsoft software donation through TechSoup, that it comes with software assurance that gets you the ability to upgrade for two years for no additional cost. So if Microsoft comes out with a new version of Office or a new operating system, you can upgrade that license for nothing for free. Uh, it also allows you to extend the use of that license to your home computer for I think $10. So you can have a legitimate license on your Office machine and on your home machine for only $10 more. Um, it comes with all kinds of benefits like e-learning courses. So for those of you who mentioned training and education being a big need, through the Microsoft, the, the way they distribute their donated software is through the Volume Licensing Service Center. And I will show you really quickly down here on this main Microsoft page, you see the Microsoft Download Help, a VLSC Quick Start Guide. The VLSC <clears throat> is where you download your stuff. It's also where you get your license keys. It's where you get your upgrades, your downgrades. It's where you would extend that license to your home computer. It's also where you would access e-learnings and online trainings. And Microsoft comes with, like if you request Office 2013, you then get access to uh, about 20 hours worth of free trainings on Office 2013. And these are short video courses you can watch anytime you want. Uh, if you get Windows 10, you'd get access to Windows 10 trainings. So it only comes with the product that you request is the training that you have access to. Uh, for someone who mentioned uh, project management earlier, Microsoft Project is a ubiquitous project management tool available through the donation program. If you request it and you get it through TechSoup, you get the software assurance that also gets you the e-learning trainings through the VLSC. So there's a lot of details in these articles down here, but it's really helpful to ensure that you know how to access those additional benefits. So I just wanted to mention that because there's a ton of training available for the Microsoft products that we are all using every day and could of course use better. Man, I know I could use Excel so much better if I had a little more training. Um, and I've been working on it, <laughs> and I've been using some of those e-learnings to help me do it. So, Keep that in mind. If you've got these donations already on your machines, you can go into the Volume Licensing Service Center and you can access those e-learnings. And we've done some webinars that specifically talk about how to get those. So I can try and point you to those resources after the fact um, if that's something specifically of interest to you. I'm going to go ahead and move on to fundraising tools, which was our next category. So if you go again to the Browse catalog under Get Products and Services, and you browse by category or solution. There is a fundraising section. There's also donor and grants management. Sometimes those are conflated into one, but we see them as pretty separate. One is more data management. The other is tools to help you raise money. So I'm going to go into fundraising. There are a lot of different types of tools that can fall under the fundraising category. There's online fundraising tools. Uh, that help you set up a site and collect donations, or registering you as a charity in all of these different states, lots of different kinds of things. There's also things like setting up a storefront to sell tote bags and coffee mugs and t-shirts. Or there's having a campaign that's just around, hey, everybody buy my t-shirt for 20 bucks and wear my, my organization's logo. So there's lots of different types of fundraising plans available. There's full online fundraising platforms like CauseVox. Shopify is a storefront. Teespring is the t-shirt product that I mentioned. Um, some of these connect to give. This is a mobile website and like text to give uh, program where you can have people sending text messages to donate 10 bucks. Like we've all seen programs like the Red Cross did so well after the earthquake in Haiti. Lots of different types of donation programs and discount programs available for online fundraising and contact management and customer relationship management tools. You'll see them listed out in these online fundraising drop-downs here. So there's one – sorry. In the drop-down here there's online fundraising, 
there's donations and grants, there's payment and donation processing, and there's e-commerce. So if you need e-commerce solutions like a storefront, you might see Shopify, or you might see these different PCI compliance tools. PCI compliance is just making sure that your website is secure enough to take credit cards. Many of you aren't necessarily processing credit cards through your own site anyway. If you are, you are usually using a third-party gateway that already has this. But if you need it built into your own site, then you want to make sure you've got something like this. This gives you that uh, HTTPS URL that helps secure that data that's transferred through your website. But you could have a Shopify site set up to help you put your products up and help you distribute them. And that could be your tote bags, your coffee mugs, or your bumper stickers, or whatever you might have if you raise funds that way. If you need to process donations and fundraise at events, for example, you may want to look at the payment and donation processing and get a Pay Anywhere mobile processing little chip that plugs into your phone so that you can take credit card donations at events or sell t-shirts at concerts <laughs> or whatever it may be at an online or in a silent auction at your annual gala. Dharma Merchant Services also has a little um, credit card processing thing that can hook up to your phone. So these are some options available to you to help you bring funds in for, with different methods depending on what you need. So there's a lot of different categories here. For just donations and grants, we can look at this category and see um, full you know, websites, NetSuite that helps you manage your full online customer relationship management and support. Philantech helps you manage online grants and organizations, all of your budget and grants, and manage those relationships online. <clears throat> NOZA helps you search charitable database of potential donors. So there's a lot of different options under this section. I don't have time to go into all of them, but there's a lot here that you can look through. And if you click into any of these, you can then read those details, read the specifications, you know, read what comes with it. I know it's not super exciting reading most of the time, but it, it does help give you an idea of what it is, what it comes with, how much storage it includes, what the rules are, any restrictions, and there's also related content. So if you're looking to select a good CRM tool for example, you might want to check out the related article and see if this is one of the ones that's recommended. Before we wrap up, I'm going to show quickly web design and graphic design which was one of the other categories in the top four that were mentioned. And again, we can go by category or solution. And we have two different categories here, web and graphic design and website management. So we've broken them out because the design of a site is different than the actual back-end system, and they use different tools. So for website management, you might be looking for a content management system. Many of you may use something like WordPress or Drupal or Joomla, or you might have something that's out of the box um, that you're using. Those are your website management tools. And they can be, there's a million different ones out there. So those are just a few that I mentioned. It could be a Weebly site or a Wix site. Um, but you can look again where there's this drop-down that appears, and you can see all kinds of different things from content management systems, full out-of-the-box systems, to web development tools, which would include things like Adobe Dreamweaver, for example, or GoDaddy, which gives you your domain name and a website builder foundation set that you can create your own website and have the domain name. Light CMS is a NetSuite product that gives you a cloud-based content management system. So these are just some examples. But for example, Adobe Creative Cloud comes with access to Dreamweaver that a lot of people will build their actual website with and then upload it to the cloud. Um, so these are just some examples under website management. I want to show under web and graphic design as well. 
the types of tools and donations that you'll see there. And then I'll take a couple more questions before we wrap up. So under Web and Graphic Design, again you'll see this drop down where you can see graphic design tools, desktop publishing tools, <laughs> audio and video, software development. You can see just how deep and rich this site is, <laughs> that it's easy to get lost. And I know there's a lot in it, but it's because there are so many donations available. And we do this type of to <clears throat> excuse me, this type of tour because we want to make sure that you know all of the different options available to you. So again, Adobe Creative Cloud that gives you access to the tools like Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, um, After Effects. Gosh, I can't even think of all of them. There's a big suite of these tools. A $5 admin fee, and then you paid directly to Adobe $19.99 a month. Uh, for the first year, and then it goes to a 40% discount after that. So this is about a 60% discount that it starts with. And then it, after the first year it goes to a 40% discount. And we are constantly trying to tweak that to make it an even better deal year over year. Um, but that gives you access to the full Adobe Creative Cloud uh, suite of all applications. There is also a photo only plan if you only want access to Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom Creative Cloud. That's a $5 admin fee to TechSoup, $7.99 paid monthly to Adobe for the first year. But lots of other tools in here too. I mentioned earlier Tableau, a, a really amazing data visualization tool. Um, lots of specific tools for different uh, sectors. So if you need things like Autodesk, their AutoCAD program, like if you're doing uh, you know, 3D design, <laughs> like if you're building architecture uh, or modeling, not like fashion modeling, but like modeling buildings or modeling structures or making models of cars or anything. I mean this kind of stuff is so cool. If, if you're training young people on how to use technologies, these programs are amazing. Um, so much less expensive through this program than they are through retail. A whole bunch of them. <clears throat> you can also access Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements bundle for $27. This is an installed program on your desktop, not a subscription. So for a one-time fee you can get access to Adobe's consumer-based, uh, like consumer level program, not the professional level program which is uh, you know, really just Photoshop Creative Cloud. Um, but Photoshop Elements is the consumer grade bundle, but it's only $27 and it's yours forever, no subscription. And you'll see some Microsoft uh, PowerPoint built in here too as another uh, design tool that people often use. But you can look into any of these sections. You'll see in audio and video programs like After Effects and things like that. So check these out. There's a lot in here. And with that I'm going to go ahead and pause to see what other questions we have before we wrap up. Thanks Becky. Um, I think we have a question about virtual marketing. And I think that, yeah, I was, um, we have a question from Tim about anything to assist with virtual marketing. And I was scratching my head as well. Thank you. Thanks Susan. So virtual marketing, I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for, but we do have a section on, <coughs> excuse me, on communications which we include marketing tools under communications. Um, if you browse by category and you'll see different uh, sections here. I don't know that any of them will do what you're looking to do and I'm not exactly sure what you mean by virtual marketing. Um, it's not my, my area of expertise so I apologize if this isn't leading you in the right direction. But we do have resources. Uh, on the variety of email and communications and marketing, um, but I don't know that any of it fits virtual marketing. Anything else in the queue that we haven't answered already? Um, I, I know Tim did um, clarify it was um, how to reach customers based on geolocation. So very specific. Gotcha. Well, I think what really that's more of is. Uh, 
constituent relationship management system where you would be able to target people based on their zip code or based on what state they are in or what, what demographic data they have given them, um, like Marketo for example, which is what we use. We don't actually have uh, programs like Marketo so much in our database. We've been trying for a long time. Uh, we do have some partners like BlackBod for example. However, they don't offer their full suite. They offer a couple of their programs, eTapestry which is their contact management and fundraising software where you can do some targeted mailing, and, um, but it's really more of a, a donor management. No, I wouldn't even say it's really contact management, um, and it's not really intended to be their full email blast tool like Razor's Edge where you can uh, really target and, and uh, segment your market much better. So it's really not uh, – we don't have some of those top tools in there unfortunately. We've been trying for a long time. We'll keep trying. But uh, as far as our relationship with BlackBob, this is the, the only couple of options that they've made available to our program so far. Any other questions before we wrap up? Okay, Susan's shaking her head no. I know we didn't get to get through all of the categories we had listed, but I hope that you found this useful today. I'm going to jump back to the slides really quickly. And I'm going to just take us toward the end here. And for those of you who aren't already registered with TechSoup, I would recommend signing up and seeing what donation programs you are likely to be eligible for. We have links in the slide deck that we uh, can point you to. These are not clickable on screen, but that can help you uh, see what types of programs you are available to request donations for, um, get access to those different donation uh, FAQs that might be useful. We would love it if you would chat in one thing that you learned today. Uh, that you would like to take back to your organization and implement. Maybe it was a specific donation program you learned about. Maybe it was a resource that you learned that we have. Um, maybe it was just that you saw something you really liked and you want to go back and get it later. Um, we'd also like to ask that you take our post-event survey when you exit today's webinar and let us know how we did and how we can continue to improve. And uh, hopefully by the next webinar my voice will be much improved. So I appreciate you for tolerating my uh, very muffled voice today. I'm sorry if it was difficult. Uh, we'd like to invite you to join us for our upcoming webinars. We have a series after the holiday break. On the 10th of January we'll be talking about Windows Server, Microsoft's server, uh, most popular server program. We'll also be talking about Adobe Acrobat. DC on the 12th, and some of the cool things you may not realize that Acrobat can do. We'll be talking about how to find and cultivate local tech expertise for nonprofits and libraries on the 19th. And we will have toward the end of January a series of webinars on grant writing. They are not quite ready to promote yet, so I didn't, didn't include them on here, but look for those. And then we will be talking about how TechSoup can help your museum if you're joining us from a museum or historical society. We hope you'll join us for those. And you can always explore our archives for more. Thank you everyone who joined us today. We hope that you'll have a great uh, holiday break if you have one coming up. TechSoup's offices will be closed after this Friday, but you can continue to request products through the end of the year 24-7 on TechSoup.org. I'd like to thank Susan for helping me on the back end and on the front end. And thank you to all of you, our participants, for joining us today. Uh, thanks uh, for the folks who've said, I hope you feel better. I appreciate it. I sure hope I do too. And if you've caught the bug, I hope you get over it before the holidays. <laughs> thanks a lot everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>